Hello again. So in this session, we are going to um, talk about a superposition of three potential flows together. So doublet plus uniform flow plus a clockwise vertex. And I'm going to talk about why this is important, because uh, this is actually being used a lot in some of the designs, um, especially for airfoils. OK, so let's get started. So we have doublet. We know the um, their complex potential, if we, so we just need to add them together. So in the previous example, we talked about doublet plus uniform flow. So I'm just going to use that, the, the complex potential of those two, u times z plus a square over z. So instead of delta, again, I am going to use, uh, similar to the previous problem, um, I'm, I want to use uh, a square so, so that everything would be on a, on a circle. So I, I use u a square so that I have a circle uh, with radius a, okay, where uh, it passes through the stagnation point. Okay, so I, I just want to use that rather than a general... Uh, doublet so now i want to add the vortex so we know from previous sessions that the potential for a vortex is complex potential is i omega over 2 pi ln z if it is a clockwise vortex right so we we, we talked about this before for clockwise uh vortex potential vortex this will be how uh, it looks like. So we talked about uh, um, counterclockwise, which was minus that, and then for clockwise, we have plus this, okay? And then I want to, so this is for the vertex, and then I want to add a C here. So in order to uh, find the value such that psi equals to zero, similar to the previous example, is uh, circle of radius a again so the question now becomes find the value of c such that psi becomes zero psi becomes zero psi is psi is zero still psi is zero is still a circle of radius A. So we want to make that specific or particular uh, stream function to represent a circle uh, with radius A, and we know that, that this, this uh, psi equals to zero passes through the stagnation point, okay? So in order to find that, we know that psi equals to zero so we know that equals to zero so this part is going to be zero i just i don't want to write that so i just write the other parts plus c equals to zero and this only is true if c is simply minus i gamma or two pi ln a and so this means that we can use the uh, if I put it here we can use the um, property of uh, logarithm and this will be z over a is this has to be zero and we know that this is true at z equals to a this logarithm is going to be one, and this is always going to be zero, right? So this is true. If you select this for C, then this uh, whole thing, the psi, is going to be zero at z equals to a. And we know already that psi is going to be also zero at z equals to a for 
this part from the previous problem. So now, again, at z equals to a, um, we have the psi equals to zero streamline, okay? So this is going to be the complex potential of these three things, doublet plus uniform flow plus clockwise vertex, where at z equals to a, we have a streamline which passes through the stagnation point. Okay. It's important. So now let's find the velocities here, velocity field and the shape of the streamlines. Okay. So in order to find the velocity field, we just need to take the derivative of f with respect to z, which is going to be ur minus i u theta times e to the minus i theta, so the radial and tangential velocities, which from here, we can simply take the derivative, is going to be u minus u a square over z square plus i over 2 pi z, which is the um, which is the um, derivative of logarithm with respect to z is going to be 1 over z, okay? And then this part is just going to be 0 because it's just, you can write it as a minus ln a, which is not a function of z, so it will come 0. I, I haven't written it here. So wz which is the complex velocity is going to be u minus, instead of z, I want to write r e to the r e i theta. So it's going to be r square e to the minus 2 i theta. Over 2 pi r here, e to the minus i theta. And this equals to, I can just, um, factor e to the minus i theta from all terms. So this one will be e to the i theta. And then the second one is going to be ua square over r square e to the minus i theta. And then the last one, I it got over 2 pi r e to the minus i theta, okay? Again, this is like circulation from, if you remember from previous lectures. So now this will become, if I want to separate the imaginary and real part of this, so this is going to be the first one is going to be u, e to the i theta, we know is cosine theta plus i sine theta and then this one is going to be minus u a square over r square cosine theta minus i sine theta. And then the last term is an imaginary term, so it still remains like that, e to the minus i theta. So from here, we can say the radial and tangential velocity, so the radial one is going to be the real part of the, this, this part, which is going to be u cosine theta 1 minus u a square over r square. And u theta is going to be minus, uh, minus this, so it's going to be minus u sine theta
1 plus i square over r square plus circulation over 2 pi r, right? So simply, this, is, this shows the strength of this technique because we were able now to find the radial and tangential velocities with this technique simply at each point r and theta in um, the uh, coordinate system based on the values of A circulation that we have and the um, uniform flow strength. This is very interesting um, and shows the strengths of this technique. So now let's look at the stagnation point stagnation points of this flow. So the stagnation points occur when u r becomes zero and also u theta becomes zero. When you when does u r become zero? It becomes zero when r equals to and I think here I have additional thing. I shouldn't have this. Let me just make sure I am, I've written it right, so u cosine theta. Yeah, we have u here, so we have already factored it out. So this becomes zero, ur becomes zero when r equals to a, which is in that circle with, for which we talked about, okay? And that's kind of validates because we wanted to stagnate, we wanted a stream line that passes through r equals to a, and passes through the stagnation point and uh, as a circle. And this is actually uh, kind of consistent with that because the stagnation point is actually where in that circle, okay? And also we want u theta to become zero for a stagnation point. Is stagnation, the definition of stagnation point is where you don't have any velocity, right? So this occurs when r equals to a based on ur, so I just want to use that. And so here we are going to have minus 2, this is going to be 2, u sine theta plus circulation, minus circulation, over 2 pi a. Okay, so u theta, in order for it to become zero, sine theta should be minus circulation over 4 pi u a. So the stagnation point occurs at these points where the sine theta equals to minus circulation over 4 pi u a. Okay, so now let's look at uh, the streamlines, how they would look like. So depending on the number of stagnation points, we can have three regimes. First is when the circulation, this um, over 4 pi u a, is between 0 and 1. So we assume that the uniform flow, say, is in the x direction, it's positive, and circulation is also clockwise. Okay. So it's in this direction. So when this happens, okay, when this is between this, so the sine theta should be between zero and minus one and zero, okay? So in this uh, situation, we can have actually two, uh, two stagnation points, why? Because you say you have sine theta, right? So let me draw this, this is say, So when sine theta is between 
zero and minus one, which is here is minus one. So let me write this is minus one and this is zero. So in this region, we are going to have two locations where sine theta equals to that value, right? So we have we are, we are going to have two stagnation points. So if I now want to uh, draw the streamlines, they will look like something like this. So for this regime, we are going to have two values. So sine theta here. smaller than one so we have we are going to have this kind of regime where at two points we are going to have stagnation points so let me just uh, show them here one in this side and one on the other side. These two points, the velocities is going to be zero. And this is where, this circle is where r equals to a, right? This radius a. So, This circle here we have a vertex which is rotating clockwise around here okay and let's look at the from farther loft so we have you are going to have a streamline that is going to get to this stagnation point and then from this stagnation point is going to go out so it would look like something like this and then here we are going to have this and further aloft, we'll have something like this. Okay, and this is X and Y coordinate system. So this would be how the streamlines for this would look like. And so interestingly, we can, here we can, we can, we can argue that we have a symmetry in the system in the X direction, meaning it doesn't matter, so if you have this x direction, so here, left and right are like each other, right? So the streamlines 
we have this kind of symmetry around that, around y-axis, but in the x-direction, okay? And it doesn't really matter if this goes the other way around. A similar shape will, will be there, okay? In the x-direction. So, we will not have any drag force in the x-direction. So, no drag force because of this symmetry in the flow. However, we don't have that symmetry in the y direction or around the x-axis. So if this is x-axis, you see these two parts are not the same. We don't have that symmetry there, okay? So we don't have no symmetry in the y direction. So consequently, we are going to have a lift. So the lift force is not going to be zero. And we can actually find the lift force here using Bernoulli equation, because Bernoulli, um, we have an inviscid flow and we have a rotational, so we can use Bernoulli's equation. And if you actually do that, you will find that the lift force that, exert, that is exerted to this uh, kind of uh, system is going to be, if I want to plot it, a lift force here and this, um, say, uh, circle. If you calculate it around that, around this circle, it's going to be simply rho u times circulation, meaning that if you increase the u, which is a uniform flow, your lift is going to increase in this system. And if you increase the circulation of your vertex, Again, your lift is going to increase. So this is how you can actually calculate this. Another scenario may occur, so we only investigated this scenario. Another scenario may occur if circulation over far four pi ua equals one. What happens? Then we are going to only have one stagnation point because it's going to be here, right? And that's going to be there. So let me plot that here. Let's see. So again, here we have that circle and the stagnation point is going to be there, but it's only one stagnation point, unlike the other one, which we had two in this situation. And the stagnation point is going to be here at the bottom, okay? So the shape of the streamlines would look like, like this. So we, are, we have This one here. And then one streamline is going to be like this. And then the other ones would be just going above that.
something like this. It will look like something like this, okay? And then the last scenario is where this circulation over 4 pi ua is greater than 1. And here, we can the stagnation point is not going to be on the, uh, that circle. So the stagnation point will be out of that circle. And I can show it how. So the stagnation point would be here, somewhere here. Yeah, so it's hard to... Draw it here. Okay, so this would be like this. And then we have... One that goes here. And one that goes here. So something like this, okay? So the stagnation point is not going to be at A equals to R, R equals to A, okay? So here I just want to make one more point about error force because this technique is actually uh, being used in airfoil designs, okay? So just remember... Uh, what we did, we just uh, defined a doublet, a uniform flow, and a, a clockwise vortex. We combined them together, and then we got different stagnation points based on the value the, of the circulation and the uniform flow, the strength of those, okay? So in airfoils, when you design them, the, a similar concept is actually being used. So we have an airfoil like this. Okay. And then you use the similar technique You put a kind of a vortex, a, a clockwise port vortex, an imaginary vortex here. You put it here. And then uh, we can have, based on that, a uniform flow and this potential imaginary vortex and this doublet that you make, we can have two stagnation points. So we typically try to design it such that they would be here, one here and one at the tail. Okay, and then so the velocity per, uh, streamlines would look like something like this. So here we have this, and then this goes out. And the flow goes over this. Airfall. 
as this. Okay? And this actually angle is called this alpha angle is called angle of attack. So there are more details into this that I'm not going to go through it in this course, but this is actually basically a similar process that they do for design of these airfoils. So uh, what you actually need to do is to put this, um, to design this imaginary vortex and these kind of flow such that the stagnation points uh, would be located in proper points. And so there are many, so you, ha you have to design your airfoil such that these uh, conditions are met. And also um, you, you can actually, you can actually um, uh, calculate the lift force for these airfoils. For example, this can be for an airplane or other things like a wind, wind blade for a wind turbine. So this is going to be rho u circulation and this will give you the lift coefficient and then you have other a lot of other components for example how you can do that so there is like uh, some transformations that you can do to simplify this like uh, some uh, conforming maps to general general conforming maps and one of the transformations that you can do to kind of solve this in uh, instead of this kind of airfoil you can solve it for a circle and then transform it to this shape of uh, airfoil it's called like a Joukowsky transformation okay so i'm not going to go through more details of that uh, but this is actually how uh, this works okay so this was the end of uh, potential flow um, problems. And in, from the next session, we are going to go through a new topic. Thank you very much, everyone.